Hi, I'm Jane Barker and I've been researching local history in Winchmore Hill for the Woodlanders Lives and Landscapes project. I'm going to talk about a recording made in the 1980s by Stuart King, who is a local craftsman and expert in the rural industries of the Chilterns. The recording is of Sidney Wingrove, who lived in Winchmore Hill near Amersham. He's talking about his memories of the village chair making factories in the early 1900s and about his time as an apprentice just before the First World War. Up until the mid 19th century, the main employment in Winchmore Hill was in agriculture, with a population of about 350 people. This changed as local crafts flourished in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Today, there are about 550 people living in the village. Sydney was born on the 13th of March, 1898, the youngest of six children. He grew up in Winchmore Hill and went to school in the neighbouring village of Penn Street. He left school when he was 12. Sydney served in the First World War and was seriously injured in France. He returned to England in 1917. He married his wife, Clarence Lancaster, in 1922 and for many years they ran the general stores in Winchmore Hill, which you can see in this picture. Sydney lived to nearly 94, dying on the 1st of March 1994. He's buried in the Chilton's Crematorium in Amersham. In this clip, Sydney is describing the chair-making businesses owned and run by the Percy family in Winchmore Hill around the turn of the century, when Sydney's father worked as a woodturner, known as a bodger, for the Percy family who ran the Plough pub. Chair legs were made using a lathe at the workshop at the Plough and we believe they were taken and assembled in the factory on the hill. This is a Windsor chair made in Winchmore Hill. The Percy family ran the Plough pub in Winchmore Hill for three generations. George Percy, a local man, became the landlord at the Plough in 1870 and set up the family's first chair making workshop behind the plough sometime in the 1870s. This is George Percy outside his pub. A second Percy chair factory was set up on the hill by 1881 and a third factory was set up after the end of the First World War. This was the largest of the Percy's chair making factories and employed 20 people in the 1930s. Like many of the chair making factories in the village it was a family-run business offering employment for local people. By 1901, chair-making was the largest source of employment in the village. This map shows the chair-making factories in Winchmore Hill. Uh, you, your father was in the chair-making industry? Oh, he, yes, he was, a, he was a chair bodger. And where did he work? He worked at the, the play. With, there were three men worked at the play, that was my father, Jack Francis, and Teddy Wingrove. They were the three and turners. Who, who were they working for? They were working for purses, the chair factory. The factory is, is Rose and Co's now. And the plough was owned by the purses? Oh, the plough the play landlord was Tom Percy, and his other brother was William Percy, and they owned the factory. So as you see, the chair turners, or bodgers as you call them, they worked at the plough and the chairs were made at the factory just as a downwind room. In this extract, Sydney describes how the chairs were transported to London, the role of the sales rep and his horse. The chairs made by the Percy family were sold in the east end of London. It was William Percy, son of landlord George, who delivered them. This photograph shows chairs being transported from Sawyer Chair Factory in Winchmore Hill to London. On a Thursday they used to load them up on the van, take them to London, see what I mean, Thursday, uh, where there are stopping places where the um, French Hornet Church Cross, then the ne next day, Friday, they went into London, then they come back as far as Southall, put up the night there, and then travel to them Sunday morning, uh, Saturday morning. See? That's quite a long 
a long drawn out journey. Well, yes, it was a Thursday, Friday, and come home Saturday. And they would hope to bring home more orders. Well, yes, yes. Of course, they were the commercial travellers in those days. You see, when they when they sold a customer the chairs, well, of course they they was after an order for the next week. Was it just one man that uh, did the deliveries? Oh yes, just one man. One man, one horse and van. Because the, the, the amusing part about that was, you know, coming home on a Saturday, they used to curl up in their empty van and go to sleep. If the police caught them asleep in charge of an horse and car, their fine was five shillings. They had to go up in front of the magistrates and they were always fined five shillings. You say Being asleep in charge of horse and car. In this final clip, Sidney outlines his three-year apprenticeship in chair making. When he left school at 12, Sidney first of all worked as a dog trainer. But he wanted to work as a wood turner or bodger for the chair industry as his father had done. And when he was 13, he was apprenticed to the chair making firm of Dancer and Hearn in the neighbouring village of Homer Green. It's interesting to note his hesitation in using arithmetic to work out how his pay progressed. In 2017, it's estimated that 13 shillings will be equivalent to 50 pounds and 81 pence. By the age of 16, he was fully trained, but sadly it wasn't too long before he left to fight in the Great War, returning injured in 1917. His injuries meant he could not return to the work he loved in the chair making business. And then my father, he got me into an apprenticeship at Dance and Earn. What were you apprenticed to? I was apprenticed to Cain Seat and Rush Framing. Yeah. How, how long was the apprenticeship? Uh, three years. I started off at five shillings a week, one shilling rise every three months. So that meant at the end of the 12 months, I got five and four, nine shillings a week for the second year. Was it uh, first nine? Now let me get this right. Five shillings for the first year, nine shillings for the second, nine and thirteen shillings a week for the third year. That was the end of my apprenticeship. At, at, uh, so I was thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I was 16 years old and I finished up earning 13 shillings a week. The chair making industry declined sharply after the Second World War and all the factories had closed by 1988. 